Thanks for tuning back in to Hollywood Revisited. Today we'll be journeying through time and space to explore 27 crazy facts that we bet you didn't know about the original Battlestar Galactica TV series. My name is Amelia and we've got a lot to cover, so let's get rolling! Number 27. Did you know Battlestar Galactica creator Glenn A. Larson was a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, sometimes called the Mormon Church? This had a heavy influence on narrative concepts such as the idea of human life not originating on or being unique to Earth. The Quorum of the Twelve and the idea of Cobol, which is a play on the Latter-day Saint scriptural Kalab, being the nearest star to where God resides. With number 26, we enter a celestial legal battle. George Lucas and 20th Century Fox once waged a lawsuit against Battlestar Galactica for its alleged similarities with Star Wars, an intriguing intersection of two major sci-fi giants. Glenn Larson was adamant that he originally conceived of the series in the late 1960s as a story originally entitled Adam's Ark. Luckily, the lawsuit was dismissed in 1980. Number 25. You know those iconic Cylon sounds and synthesized voices? Attention! Attention! His Eminence, the Imperious Leader, will be with us shortly. They were actually created by Michael Santiago using the EMS Vocoder 2000, the same device that lent its voice to Knight Rider, showing how television shows often borrow from each other to create rich audio landscapes. Number 24. Despite its elaborate budget, Battlestar Galactica often reused props, costumes, sets, and visual effects footage from previous Universal Pictures productions. In fact, many of the series' props would later go on to be used in other productions, including Buck Rogers in the 25th Century and Knight Rider, as we've just discussed. I guess it all goes to show that even in space, recycling is key. Number 23. All Cylon Centurions were over 6 feet tall, leading to the unique hiring practice of recruiting out-of-work basketball players, a reminder of the behind-the-scenes creativity in casting. Moving to number 22. When ABC cancelled the series due to high costs, both NBC and CBS showed interest in buying it. The cancellation led to a massive fan campaign and the creation of Galactica 1980 a testament to the series' enduring appeal and the power of the fanbase. At number 21, we have a sobering fact. It was reported by multiple news sources that a despondent fan was so distraught that he took his own life after the series was cancelled. This deeply tragic event reminds us of the powerful bond between a television show and its dedicated audience. Number 20, Torchbearer Richard Hatch co-wrote and co-directed the 30-minute pilot Battlestar Galactica The Second Coming in 1999, in an attempt to keep the franchise alive, showing the profound personal impact the show had on its cast. Number 19, John Kalikos gave such a stellar performance throughout the series that it led to his role on General Hospital, underscoring the show's launchpad for acting careers. Number 18. Boxy's Daggett, Muffet 2, was portrayed by a trained chimpanzee named Evie, adding a unique flavor to the series, which was always full of surprises. Number 17. Dirk Benedict's portrayal of Lieutenant Starbuck was heavily inspired by the character Brett Maverick as played by James Garner. At number 16, we have a bit of a mystery. The members of the Council of the Twelve are elected in the first episode. However, every time we see the Council thereafter, it is composed of different members, reminding us of the fluidity of television production. Number 15. Battlestar Galactica was the first weekly TV series to ever be budgeted over $1 million per episode. In today's terms, it would be equivalent to approximately $5 million per episode, illustrating just how groundbreaking the series was for its time. Number 14. As a result of the series, U.S. Air Force pilots started referring to the F-16 Fighting Falcon as the Viper when it entered service in 1980. This was due to the resemblance they saw between it and the Battlestar Vipers, and the name has stuck ever since. Number 13. Love was in the air on set. In a Blu-ray audio commentary, Richard Hatch stated that he had crushes on both Sarah Rush and Lorette Spang adding a human touch to the space saga. And it wasn't just Richard Hatch. Noah Hathaway admitted in an interview that he had a crush on Jane Seymour, who played his on-screen mother. 
Number 12, Terry Carter was originally going to play Viper pilot Lieutenant Boomer, but a roller skating accident led him to being recast as Colonel Ty. Number 11, Lorette Spang's character was not originally meant to appear beyond the pilot episode. Thankfully, when ABC bought the series, they decided to extend her character's time on the show. Number 10, although Sheba, played by Anne Lockhart, was a central character, she never fires her laser pistol once in the series, underscoring the complexities of her character beyond just being a fighter. Number 9, Herb Jefferson Jr., who played Boomer, originally auditioned for the role of Apollo. Instead, he was offered the role of Starbuck, but turned it down. Number 8, Marin Jensen, Athena's character, disappears from the series with no narrative explanation. In real life, the reason was less mysterious. Sadly, her time on the series was cut short due to her being diagnosed with Epstein-Barr syndrome. Number 7, Richard Hatch almost left the series during its original run due to creative differences. Like many creative endeavors, Battlestar Galactica wasn't without its share of conflict. However, he not only went on to complete the series, but to be the only actor to feature in both the original series and the reimagined series in the 2000s. Number 6, Stu Phillips composed the series' music and received a Grammy nomination for his score of the pilot episode. Battlestar Galactica was not just about stunning visuals, but oral excellence as well. Number 5, Vipers were originally going to be named Cobras. I wonder if that name would have been as quickly adopted by F-16 pilots. It doesn't have the same ring, does it? Number 4, the original series was released during the Cold War, and the concept of the Cylons can be viewed as a metaphor for the Soviet Union. The art of television often mirrors the global landscape at the time of its creation. Number 3, despite its significance, the Battlestar Pegasus disappeared from the series without explanation. The show's creators had intended to bring it back, but ultimately decided against it. Number 2, as you well know, Dirk Benedict went on to star as Templeton Faceman Peck in the successful A-Team series. But did you know that in one A-Team episode filmed at Universal Studios, a theme park employee dressed as a Cylon walks past Face, and for one brief moment, Face seems to remember him from a previous life? The moment is easily one of the most well-done cameos of all time. And at number one is the fact that the Battlestar Galactica journey is never over. Like all good things, Battlestar Galactica gets remade and reimagined over time. Of course, there was the acclaimed reimagined TV series in the 2000s, but did you know that there has long been talk of another movie in the works? In fact, in 2022, Simon Kinberg revealed that they are hoping to produce a shared TV universe to go along with that movie. So let's cross our fingers that the future project isn't too far off and that it does justice to the original. Thanks for revisiting the original Battlestar Galactica with us. Let us know in the comments if there are any other interesting facts that we missed. Now the big question is, which of these two videos are you going to watch next? I think you'll enjoy the one on the right, but then again, you may prefer the one on the left. Either way, it's your choice. See you in the next one.